Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're gonna to be doing a words per minute typing counter program that is gonna look like this in the end. It's gonna say three, two, one, and then you type as fast as you can, and then you hit enter, it says your words per minute. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one shop to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Launch your passion project with Squarespace. So let's get started by making a new Java project. We'll call it our WPM counter. And then inside of there, we'll make our class. We'll call it WPM program. Hit the main method and finish. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is print out that three, two, one to let the user know when to start typing. So we'll just start out by printing out three and then copy that two, one. But when we print this out now, it'll just do three, two, one. There's no one second interval between the print statements. So that's what we'll do next by typing time unit dot seconds dot sleep. And we wanna do one second, so put a one second in there. Hover over it and click Add Throws Declaration. I'll zoom out a little bit here. This tells Java that, hey, this sleep method from time unit seconds may cause an error if there's something wrong with the sleeping. So we just let this main method know that some code inside of here may throw this specific exception. Add this after each one. Save and run. We get a beautiful countdown, three, two, one. Next, what we wanna do is print out several random strings that the user's gonna to have to type exactly. So to do this, let's create a string array and then use a random number generator to get random elements from that string array. We'll call this string array words and set that equal to some words we throw in here. Some of the random words I could come up with were like envelope, cantaloupe, the, hello. You can change these to whatever you want. I'm just gonna add a few more here. So now we have a words array with 10 elements inside. Let's create a random number generator to start getting random elements. And let's import that into our program. So now that generated another import statement at the top, along with that time unit for the sleeping. To get a random element from this words array, what we do is words of whatever element we generated. To do that, you do rand.next int, and then throw the cap, the max number for that generation. Since indexes start at zero and there's 10 elements, our max one should be nine. Now this piece of code will generate a random number between zero and nine, but we actually have to do something with it. So let's actually just throw that inside of a print statement. Save, and something's off here. Uh, to access this, we have to put static in front of it. Static just means that we don't have to create an object to access this array at the top. Now, if we save and run, after the countdown, we'll print a random element from this array. However, we want to generate a bunch of random words, not just one. So we can repeat this code with a for loop. So for example, for int equals i, and we wanna go up until say, we'll print out, say five words. Now we'll do 10. We'll print out 10 words, then i plus plus. Now, since this is inside the for loop, it'll repeat this code 10 times. However, since this is in a print line method, it'll go to the next line every time, but we wanna keep it on the same line. So there's actually a method called print that'll just print each on the same line and so they're not all stuck together, we'll add a space between each one. Now we get the results looking beautiful like this. Next, we want to go to the next line, so we'll just add a print statement for the user to start typing it. If you notice now, we can't type anything. To do this, let's create a scanner object and we'll put system.in here that means the console, import the scanner, which generates this at the top, and we'll say that those typed words is equal to the scanner from the console dot next line. 
This gets the next entire line until the user hits enter in this console and stores that as a string into the typed words variable. For testing purposes, let's just print out that typed words. And then we'll just enter something after the countdown, like elephant, and we get elephant printed out. So now that everything's working, we actually have to start to calculate the words per minute. And we can do that by taking the exact seconds of the day when the words are printed, and then taking the seconds of the day when we hit enter, subtracting them, and then calculating the words per minute with that difference of time. <clears throat> so we can actually take the nanoseconds of the day. So after all those 10 words are printed, we'll log the seconds of the day. So type local time dot now, two nano of the day. This gets the exact nanoseconds of the day that we're currently at. We'll store that into a double variable called start. Next, after the user hits enter, it'll go to this code down here. So we'll just log the end. Local time dot now dot two nano of the day. This gets the current nanoseconds of the day after the user hits enter. And we can simply calculate the elapsed time by doing end minus start. And to show that this is working, we'll just print out that elapsed time variable. Save and run. Okay, so let's wait a few seconds, then hit enter. And we see it was about five seconds, 5.259 seconds that we waited. Now this says E9 because it's actually nanoseconds, so it's a really long number. So let's just convert that to regular seconds. So to make this more accurate, we wanna keep that 0.259 or at least some decimal places. So instead of doing an integer seconds, we'll create a double seconds that's equal to the elapsed time divided by one, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, three, point zero. And if we print out seconds, this is nine zeros, by the way, nine zeros, point zero. What this will do now is convert it to actual seconds. Finally, we'll calculate the words per minute. With some Google searching, I found that the words per minute formula is this. You have X number of characters divided by five, and then that divided by one minute will give you Y words per minute. So we need to first get the number of characters that the user entered. And to do that is really easy. Say the number of chars is equal to that typed words string dot length. So now we have the number of characters, X. And since we have the time, we actually have everything we need to start filling in this formula. So we'll just say that the integer words per minute is equal to the number of chars divided by five. This five is like the average length of a word. So we keep that there for a constant. Then that divided by the number of seconds that we typed all those words. Since this results in a double and this is an integer, we have to cast this whole thing to a double, but we can actually do the casting right here double to make sure that this calculation results in a double instead of an integer. Since numchars is an integer and five is an integer, this division would be truncated, so it wouldn't be accurate. So we have to cast this to a double so it's more accurate. Finally, we have to cast this whole thing to an integer to match the words per minute on the left. However, since this is for our specific elapsed time seconds instead of a minute, we have to multiply this whole thing by 60 seconds per minute. So we say times 60. So now finally, we can print out a little message. Your words per minute is, and then we'll put WPM with a little exclamation mark. Let's save and run this. We get three, two, one. I'm gonna type this as fast as I can. Ah. 
and I got 64 words per minute. These are pretty tricky words to be fair, and this also doesn't account for errors, so theoretically you could just mash your keyboard and get a really high words per minute, but this is just our little program, okay? So now I'll walk through exactly everything that's happening line for line. So when we click the green run button, we run code inside of the main method. The first line of code in the main method is to print out three, so that's why we see three here. Then we use this code to sleep for one second. This works because we imported that time unit code into our program. So we print three, wait one second, print two, wait one second, print one, wait one second, and now we do some setup here. We create a random number generator from the random class, which we imported up here. Next we have a for loop that goes to 10. We print out this, words, square brackets, ran.nextInt9. This ran.nextInt9 is a method from that random class we imported that generates a random number between zero and nine. Let's say, for example, it generates, well, actually we know what it generates, hammer. Hammer up here is index seven. So we generate the number seven, which gets the element at index seven of this words array up here. We put it up here so that all the methods could use it and it's good practice to have things that don't change up at the top. So we print hammer plus a space. Next we go to the top, i is now one. We create a random number again, and this one gets hello, and repeat that 10 times until we finish this. Next we print a new line. We create a double variable called start, which gets the nanoseconds of the day that we're currently at. We create a scanner, and get the entire line that the user enters, which are all those typed words. We end the timer by getting the current nanoseconds again. We subtract the difference, convert that to seconds, get the number of characters that the user entered, and then calculate words per minute with the words per minute formula, modified a little bit, making sure it's as accurate as possible, casting this to a double, making sure that the, no data is lost by dividing integers, and then converting the entire formula to an integer to get a nice words per minute number, and then finally printing out your WPM is whatever that calculation is. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments. Well, first I'd like to take a quick break to tell you about my experience with Squarespace. It's really great. It's the best I've ever used. I've created websites using HTML by scratch. I've made websites with other builders, but this has been the best by far. It's so easy. I got great support. The template I used had basically everything and I got my website up in just a few hours, all of this. I was really into graphic design and I wanted to be like a web designer. And man, what they are doing here is just really, really great. I was able to set up donations have downloadable links and everything I need to make my website personal to me. If you're working on your personal brand as a young professional or you want to launch an app or host a program like this, I really recommend Squarespace, guys. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Alex Lee to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.